Hello, and thank you for joining us today. We are the NUIC team. We are the contactless charge and discharge of a UUV battery, also known as an unmanned underwater vehicle system. I would like to first start off with our technical directors. We have Peter Nickerson from NUIC, who is a valuable team member that we have that has been helping us along our way and Brennan Smurbeck, which is a software engineer that graduated in 2017 from the University of Rhode Island. Meet the team. I myself am Tucker Snow Gerard. I'm an electrical engineer at URI, graduating in May of 2023. And I'd like to also introduce my team member, Isaiah Horde, which is our, an, also an electrical engineer from the University of Rhode Island, also graduating in um, May of 2023. Company overview, the Naval Undersea Warfare Center, also known as NUIC, is the United States Navy's full spectrum research development test and evaluation engineering and fleet support center. Their main focus is submarines, autonomous underwater systems, also known as UUVs, which are unmanned underwater vehicles, and offensive defensive wef weapon systems. Below are two pictures of a submarine on the right and a UUV or an AUV, AUS on the left. An autonomous underwater vehicle, an AUV or a UUV underwater unmanned vehicle is an unmanned and untethered vehicle with, a, with limited human assistance in the loop control. Their uses include hydrographic surveys and mine detection. Below is an additional image of an AUV. Project motivation is we're trying to produce an efficient wireless power transfer or WPT. We want to produce efficient power monitoring, recharge and discharge capabilities and trickle charge capabilities. We want to be able to control the voltage level and the current flowing between the two batteries. And we want to be able to control the discharge and recharge rates of that battery from a DC source or a DC generator to a 12 volt battery. And then we would like to also trickle charge that with monitoring capabilities, which I will talk about in future slides. We also have fall protection. Fall protection and mon monitoring is increasingly um, important for the system. We want to check for water damage or possible water um, producing elements. Because this battery will be put underwater, we would also like to have voltage, power, current control monitoring so that we can adjust the power levels, the voltage levels, and the current levels while the battery is discharging, recharging, or if we are trickle charging the battery. We would also like to implement safety sensors this will allow us to detect if there's water inside of the battery or the components that we have installed inside of what we will use as a fish tank to demonstrate submerging the battery underwater in an ocean environment. Anticipated best outcomes. A system that is able to utilize a submerged power supply host platform to recharge a battery on a submerged vehicle in a contactless manner. We would like to create an underwater wireless power transfer system, or WPT, that is capable of charging and discharging 100 watts. We would like to also show good command and control of this wireless bidirectional power transfer system. That would include the trickle charging, the discharging, and the recharging of the 12 volt battery. Summary of T team cat. Uh, key technical accomplishments towards achieving the AVO. We conducted research on multiple key topics, such as wireless power transfer, UUVs, or the unmanned underwater vehicle systems, batteries, and circuit design. The two main important components of this was the coil design and the circuit design, because without an efficient coil design, we wouldn't be able to wirelessly power transfer and a circuit design that is capable of having fault sensors to detect if there's water inside of the system and also be able to control and monitor the voltage levels that is discharging and recharging the 12 volt battery.
the economic impact for the company. We would like to develop a cost-effective method with our $2,000 limit for buying the materials. We have that cap that will allow us to monitor and develop systems, circuits, and ways and methods to produce a, an effective discharge, recharge, and triple charge battery system. We would also like to develop new ideas, perhaps for the new team or the Naval Undersea Warfare Center, we can develop new ideas or circuit designs to help implement um, ideas in the scientists and researchers that already work at NUIC. And we'd also like to increase the company efficiency. With our research and our development of our circuit designs, we may be able to help the researchers develop new ideas that can help with their time and their efficiency and their resources and develop better systems. Here is our block diagram. This is our bi-directional wireless power transform block diagram. It has a DC source, which we'll have as a DC generator, which will produce our DC voltage, followed by an inverter that is connected to the transmitter coil that allows the battery to be charged. It will also be a receiving coil that allows our battery to discharge. And both the coils, which are coupled by a magnetic field of an AC source, will allow us to also trickle charge and monitor the system so that we can keep the battery at a step steady level if we want to trickle charge it, discharge it completely or slightly, and same with the recharging capabilities. That's connected to the receive coil that can also transmit to discharge the battery, followed by a rectifier and the battery, which I'll explain further in a future slide, that is a 12 volt battery. My individual technical contributions include the battery choice. We are going with a AA 12 volt DC nickel metal hydride battery. It has 2000 capacitor milliamps per hour. It is 10 batteries, which are five wide and two deep with a solder tap that will allow us to connect the batteries to our circuit. I am also in charge of the coil design and simulation. I utilized ANSYS electronics, which allowed me to develop the coil that you can see in the image on the right. The inner radius is 50 millimeters and it has 29 turns or 29 coils wrapped around. I found that to be the most effective and efficient coil design. The red is supposed to show the transmitter design and the blue is supposed to show the receive design, but both coils will have the ability and capability to transmit and receive on both ends. We also want with this spiral design, instead of a cone shape, a cone shape would have the spirals stacked on top of each other. Instead, we, desi we decided to layer out or design the spiral design of the coil to allow a more efficient process after running our simulations. I will also be in charge of the coil housing design, which includes a fish tank to mimic an ocean water environment or a salt water environment, that we will place our coils in. And I'll also develop in a system in the future for, the, for April for the final presentation that will allow me to adjust the distance between the two coils. Technical accomplishments that I will make before April 15th, the final presentation for this project. I will complete the coil design and find the most efficient one, whether that be increasing or decreasing the amount of turns, the inner radius, and such as that information. And I will also construct the coil and housing device, which I just previously mentioned, which will be the fish tank. And that will be mimicking the ocean environment with the salt water. And then the final product will create a wireless power transfer or WPT prototype. And the image on the right is a UUV, which includes the battery. The block diagram is kind of consisting of this entire picture with the inverter and the charging station. And you can see there in the image that it also has those spiral coil designs, which allows that discharge, recharge, and trickle charge of the battery. I would now like to introduce my partner and team member, Isaiah Plordo. Hi, my name's Isaiah. And to expand on our bi-directional wireless power transfer block diagram, 
The inverter is made up of two MOSFETs connected to a voltage controlled source. And those voltage control sources operate at opposite times because if they were to operate at the same time, the MOSFETs will blow. The rectifier is composed of a full bridge diode, which is four diodes connected together. Uh, my individual technical contributions include circuit design and simulation. On the right, you can see our circuit design so far. Uh, I'm still solving for the components in the circuit, such as the capacitors, inductors, and the voltage controlled sources. Uh, on the left, you can see our DC source, which we have figured out it's going to be 15 volts, and that is connected to the MOSFETs, which are connected to the voltage controlled sources. And uh, we have a capacitor and inductor in series, and then we have our transmitter coils, which create our coupled magnetic, magnetic field, which are L3 and L4. Then we have another capacitor and inductor in series connected to a full bridge diode. And then we have load capacitors and resistors at the end. Uh, I also constructed inverter and rectifier circuits after doing ample amounts of research on them. Those would be the MOSFET and full bridge diode circuits. Uh, I am also simulating these inverter slash rectifier circuits in multi-SIM to get our desired outputs. So we can charge, discharge, and trickle charge our 12 volt nickel metal hydride battery. Uh, technical accomplishments that I will make before April 15th. I will complete the circuit design and simulation and uh, complete solving for the components in the circuit design. I will also order the prototype components with my partner. We will need to order a DC source, uh, voltage controlled sources, MOSFETs, inductors, capacitors, and a resistor and diodes. And uh, I will also create the wireless power transfer circuit on a uh, circuit board. And then I will put together the wireless power transfer prototype. Uh, our key future technical accomplishments towards achieving the anticipated best outcome, we have to complete the circuit and coil simulations and uh, receive our desired outputs. We have to order components for the prototype. And then we have to create the wireless power transfer prototype. And that will take ample amount of testing and comparing to our simulations to make sure everything is working correctly. This is our risk tracking template. At the be beginning of the project, we ran into a problem of a student version of the ANSYS simulation software tool, which is to simulate our core simulations but we have since solved this by getting a license offered at URI. We could also run into a problem of parts being delayed due to uh, components being on back order. We will still have to see how that goes. And also a possible destruction of circuit boards due to high voltage and miscommunication. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, I would like to sincerely thank some of uh, the people that have helped us so far on this project. Um, Peter Nickerson, our technical director from Newick, he has been very helpful in guiding us along the way of the project so far. Brendan Smirbeck, a technical director from URI, he has also been very helpful. And the ELE Computer Capstone Program Director, Dr. Sunak, has uh, set up the entire program and uh, has been a great person to work with. Thank you for your time.